All right, y'all, let's talk about how to change out your parrot's food bowls without getting bitten in the process. Aggression around food bowls is pretty common and what I think of as a symptom of a larger issue. Now that's because it's not usually serious enough that someone shells out money for a behavior consultation, but it can be a symptom of other areas of problematic aggressive behavior, perhaps subtle or just bothersome, but not a huge inconvenience in the beginning. Food bowl aggression rarely exists on its own. Now the tactics and techniques that we use to achieve our goals at the feeding station will often bleed out and they have a bleed out effect to the way that we view behavior overall. If we see our mechanics simply as a means to an end rather than a much more foundational way of communicating with our animals in a language that they understand, we are sure to have much more painful problems. Now, the reason why food bowl aggression is more intense is that this interaction is extremely predictable. As in, we do this every day, twice a day, or more, and there's a very distinct set of cues that prompt this behavior. It can be very intense, leading to the bear grabbing at the bowls, pulling them out and dropping them on the cage floor, flinging them around and making a huge stressful and confusing situation. In our effort to prevent the food bowl flinging from happening, we get locking bowls maybe, and that can make our hands even more vulnerable to bites as we take more time to get the food bowls out of the cage. Now, one of the ways that food bowl aggression falls neatly into this us versus them narrative is that it doesn't seem to make sense to us. Now, why wouldn't our parrot want fresh food and clean water? We search for causal reasoning that looks to the nature of the bird that we don't understand, such as the behavior having roots in territoriality or possessiveness. Asking ourselves this why question in this way doesn't serve us very well. Instead, we want to look at the feedback loop that the problem behavior is serving. So we're going to get to that in just a moment. Each scenario is different and needs to be addressed in the environment in which it occurs. So every feedback loop might be a bit different. And we're going to talk about how this will help you when you look for your own feedback loops. But the reason why this is such a, a common occurrence is the consistency in which the interaction occurs. Changing out the food bowls is a necessary task and the way that we misinterpret this overexcitement carries this behavior forward. So what this means is that your bird gets a ton of information after that first interaction that happens when you approach the home space and the feeding area. It may not even have anything to do with the food bowls at all at first. Just approaching the space and having to do some sort of intrusive activity created a reaction in the bird. Now we gave the bird feedback about how to behave in this very regular, extremely consistent scenario that happens several times a day, every single day. We in turn map our interpretation of the experience, but the bird is just seeing the same interaction day in and day out, and if they intensify their behavior, the desired feedback does little to change the conditions. There is an extremely important set of takeaways here. That is that A, there are two different perspectives on this one interaction and your interpretation may be very different than the birds. B, you are giving feedback, it may not just be what you think it is, and C, something happens that with this level of consistency and predictability will also lend itself to what we call folk interpretations and solutions. It turns out there is a science to how we can bring about resolution to this extremely important issue. And in doing so, not only can we bring peace at the feeding station, but we can also build trust around our hands and our presence in general. I'm guessing that you're here listening to me because you have tried a few things to work through the stressful behavior for such a necessary interaction such as food bowl aggression. To be perfectly blunt, many courses of action that we take actually make the situation worse. Now let's get into why. As we continue to go about our business of what we call daily husbandry, daily bird care, the problem gets worse. Now the first thing that we might try is ignoring the behavior. We want to show them that they can bite, they can strike, but we aren't going to change anything. We might even pull a flex and show that we're going to be the boss, that nothing actually changes when the bird threatens us. The big issue here is that the bird does actually get something out of this interaction. Eventually, you leave and there are fresh bowls of food and water. So, who is the sucker now? Just kidding. Again, stepping into a different perspective, the other side of the interaction is really hard, if not impossible, to take a look at. We are, throughout all of these courses, training your brain to look at all of the functional consequences that the bird's behavior achieves from their perspective when a behavior is performed. And that's tough to do. We don't do that naturally. So, ignoring the behavior, I can give you my best behavior guarantee, which is as certain as a person can be with a little bit of wiggle room for individual differences, simply doesn't work. 
Now, another tactic I've even caught sight of my own volunteer staff doing is trying to outwit the bird with speed, whipping our hands in and out. This will make our bird's behavior intensify. They will work harder to achieve the consequences that they have consistently reached. Going faster virtually never works. Your bird can strike faster than you can. Another common technique is using aversives. The term aversive means any stimulus that, such as an object or sound that the bird wants to escape or avoid. So people will use a tool of some sort to keep the parrot away from the bowls so that they can switch them in and out. I've seen spray bottles, brooms, brushes, plates, cutting boards, spatulas, and a host of other household items used. We might even say, nope, stop, don't bite. That's not exactly an aversive if the bird doesn't think it is. Aversives definitely get the job done because that is the point of being aversive. There is no question here, but you're going to have one messed up bird in the process. When they see you with that scary object, they will transfer that level of stress and fear to you as the harbinger of stressful stimuli. Causing this level of stress on your bird is not just harmful to your bird's relationship with you. It will increase the baseline level of stressful hormones and so stressful interactions into your bird's life. This means that it will in general be more likely to be, get more agitated, irritable, and increase their vocalizations, engaging in feather destructive behavior, bang at their toys, pluck at cage bars, and be less likely to initiate behaviors we want to see more of. This means like playing, bathing, and preening. It's important to address possible problem scenarios and suggestions that people face, in my opinion, because some of these interventions will work for a time. You will get your immediate goal accomplished, but it will come at a cost. As your science-based and evidence-based guide, it is my responsibility to you and your bird to show you what is li a likely outcome for these harmful practices, like the ghost of future behavioral consequences or something like that. All right, so in this lesson, I'm gonna to tell you right now that the method we are gonna discuss will help us work through the issue temporarily, but we need to go deeper to find a solution. But the first thing that we need to do is to stop getting bitten and stop the bird from getting so amped up. First, let's take a look at the parrot's environment and what we can do to support the behaviors we wanna see more of. We want the right behaviors to be easy with low effort. I always look for cages that have swing out feeders or feeder doors. If you don't have this or you have to lock in your bird's bowls because they kept pulling them out, it could be really helpful to find some sort of resolution here. Feeder doors are not the be all to end all and it just means that we don't have to reach our whole arm in the bird's space. Another environmental component that is helpful is to add a smaller treat cup at the opposite end of the home space than the feeding station. Now the point that I'm working toward is a very traditional procedure called differential reinforcement of an incompatible behavior. This is also called DRI. What this means is that we can reinforce with treats our bird moving away from the feeding station while we work the, with the food bowls. Generally speaking, it needs to be broken down into small approximations rather than just feeding a bird a huge nut to work while we freshen the bowls. This is because the amount of learning history the bird has in the face of these conditions can mean that they will probably just drop the food and come running after you anyway. This method works well to achieve the very basic problem that we face every day. So in these next videos, you will see me using treats to shape the behavior of stationing away from the food bowls. Okay, we're going to go through two different scenarios using differential reinforcement of an incompatible behavior where we're shaping with our approximations with Garcon, the blue-fronted Amazon. Now in the first one, you can see where the trainer is actually using really small steps and small treats to station the Amazon away from the feeding bowls. She's even approximating her arm moving towards the bowl. You can also see where she's moving slow enough that she's waiting for the criteria, criteria that we're looking for, which is the bird to stay still. And then use your hand in this next one to reach out towards the bowl. Okay, good. Perfect. This is good. Okay. 
If he breaks from his station, she waits right. for a moment because she is moving slowly and as soon as he stops moving, she gives him a treat. In this way, we can actually achieve our desired goal, which is removing the food bowl in one single session. So differential reinforcement procedures topically address the problem behavior by offering a remedy, but we are not addressing the underlying function of aggressing towards the person. Without addressing this, we could be doing ourselves and our birds a huge disservice as we look for answers to some of our other aggressive responses. So congrats, you just got to see one of the most comprehensive training sessions. And what you will also see is that with consistency and the right mechanics and the right information, it doesn't actually take long to get to success. So what we also say is that food bowl aggression is usually indicative of a lot more aggression. And so what you need to do is you need to get to the root of the problem. And that's exactly what we do in our entire course. So this is an excerpt from the bigger course where we talk about this on a much more comprehensive scale. So you can get that inside the Avon Behavior Lab with a premium membership. So you can try that out for 14 days for free with the coupon code AVIAN. Otherwise, check out our other videos on parrot aggression.